Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the weekend. It is a Saturday out here. September 28, 2024 is the date. 7.55 a.m. here, local time in California. Yesterday out here, we had a little bit of earthquake activity off the coast of Northern California here into the Gorda Ridges. 5.1 and a 4.9 earthquake, or 4.6 earthquake. It looks like uh, two earthquakes within a couple minutes of each other yesterday around the Gorda Ridges. A uh, separation area here of the plates. Far as any adjustment going on uh, following these earthquakes yesterday, so far we've uh, only seen one of them. A 2.2 across the area of Anderson. Southern California down here lighting up here in the last hour or so. Uh, across various areas, Bakersfield starting to see a little bit of movement coming in here uh, to the region that's seen the five-pointer here some weeks back. Also around the Ridgecrest area, seen a handful of earthquakes as well. One earthquake right here in the, um, yeah, it's on the uh, North American side here of the plate boundary, just off the San Andreas Fault here. This is the uh, uh, segment of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault that uh, gets a little bit of activity here, but it always makes me nervous every time we see some type of earthquake activity just around this bend, little bend area around the San Bernardino mountain range. And today, a little one-pointer, also a little bit of swarming going on here, specifically on that uh, plate boundary as well from yesterday, and a handful of earthquakes in there today as well, including a 2.9, right, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault. So some adjustment going on here today, and uh, you can pretty much follow a trail of earthquakes here across Southern California in the last 24 hours, all this uh, land being shoved up here and pushed up against the plate boundary adding the strain and of course the plate boundary itself is where most of the strain accumulates and it's been over 300 years since we've seen a big one out here along the southern branch here of the san andreas fault and who knows folks today could be the day tomorrow next week all i know it's good to be prepared out here um, i was down here a couple days ago looking at the palos Verdes area landslide activity and um it's uh, def definitely an ongoing process there. Slow, uh, but ongoing and broadening across this area of the Portuguese Hill or the uh, Portuguese Bend region. And it's, uh, I, I just don't see it getting any better. Uh, I did publish a little video here last night on the potential out here of, uh, well, further escalation of the uh, continual land movement. It's just... It's something that's probably going to continue for a little while, folks. And I think uh, it's, yeah. All right, let me uh, jump out of there. Looks like the Malibu area, yeah, 2.7 from yesterday. Another earthquake today, 1.2. So things are a little hot down here across Southern California area today. Starting to see uh, amplification of earthquakes across a broad area. Uh, Southern California region up here across the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. A little bit of movement up there across the area of South Mount Whitney. A little swarm going on here near the Olancha, Olancha area. All right, the rest of the map out here. Minimal movement across the rest of the Great Basin area. Nothing going on across Yellowstone. Got one earthquake, a little 0.2, negative 0.2. And a couple small earthquakes out there across the Texas area, goodness, a lot of rain, a lot of flooding out there in the areas of the Carolinas. And, uh, well, I think that's going to continue here for a little while. Well, at least the, uh, the effects will. There's a lot of water that fell out here from Hurricane Helene. And um, the weather has calmed down, but the effects of that tropical system will linger for a long time. A lot of damage being reported out here from all the flooding. A lot of storm surge damage as well across Florida. Goodness, today's severe weather, not a whole lot going on. Uh, just general thunderstorm activity out there, it looks like. Uh, back to earthquake activity here across the, the map, the rest of the globe here. Let's see what we got. So far today, 5.1 over here around the Volcano Islands area. Southern end of this trench zone, about 51 miles deep here into the uh, Izu Trench. Aside from that, a lot of activity here from yesterday, so really no large-scale movement as of yet. 
I guess we'll see what happens here today, but we do have the West Coast lighting up for sure, specifically Southern California area. Uh, Alaska, not a whole lot going on. Hawaii, mainly uh, looks like deeper earthquakes out here across the Pahala area. These are the uh, some earthquakes associated with the uh, magma plumbing system down below, a little bit deeper areas underneath this region that supply and fuel the um, volcanoes across the Big Island. Kilauea Volcano right now, fairly quiet in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, let's see here, New Zealand fairly quiet, a couple threes, but really nothing major going on here today uh, yet. <laughs> it's still early, uh, at least out here along the west coast. Mediterranean area getting a swarm of activity out here. Look at this, across, looks like uh, just around the uh, China area westward north of the plate boundary north of the Himalayas here a couple fours even some activity here across the area of the Mediterranean that's going to be some movement out around Athens it looks like the Greece area catching a 4.7 earthquake this morning so if anywhere aside from Southern California right now some elevated activity being noted across this region of the world a couple deep well there is a deep earthquake up here along the Aleutian Trench as well so we've got Izu Trench, the Aleutian Trench here, showing some deeper activity. Watch the Kuril Kamchatka, Kamchatka Trench here. This is definitely uh, an area of interest here uh, for terms of larger scale potential. It's been a little while since we've seen any large scale movement, and I feel that's fairly primed. But if you ask me, I could sit on the globe here and show you guys many, many areas that are well primed for some larger movement. Space weather activity, fairly quiet across the board for now. 15% chance for an X flare, M flare at 55, C flare around 99% chance or so. Taking a look here at these sunspots, 38, 39, one of the uh, uh, larger sunspot features out here is, uh, well, you know, when we we're looking at the far side images of the sun, this was a fairly massive region and it is covered, the coverage wise, it is fairly massive, massive. Uh, but the complexity within this core is really not all that impressive. Um, I think it does harbor some M flare potential out here, but I don't see anything above that. And the rest of these sunspots out here are fairly stable with a clear separation there of the cores, of uh, the magnetic cores there of that sunspot, sunspots here. Uh, so really not expecting too much out here from any of these other ones. It would just have to watch this area. Maybe for some C and maybe a M flare event in there as well. But uh, aside from that, things pretty quiet across the board. Not a whole lot of auroras here in the forecast for now. As far as any uh, close, approach, close approach asteroids here this morning, let's go ahead and take a look, see what we have. Uh, we're live, right? But what's going on with the... Uh, or the asteroid, asteroid site not working? There we go. Uh, today, oh, that's a that's actually a pretty close approach here. <clears throat> 30,000 miles here for a bus size 21 foot asteroid. That's uh, earlier this year we had one come within about 12,000 miles. So this is about, you know, double the distance, but that's actually awfully close. They must have just discovered this one here. Um, and it's coming pretty close here to Earth, but this is just the generic version here of the orbital viewer. Um, I actually prefer the other one, the uh, near Earth object viewer. Um, yeah, but it's Let me back out of here real quick. There we go. I'm not seeing anything that's uh, of any noteworthy statistics here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's fairly close, 30,000 miles here from the planet. I 
But it just goes to show you here how uh, these ev these little asteroids here can go undetected and then just pop up like a day or the day of when it's uh, closest approach here. That's 21, a 21 foot asteroid. That's um, six meters. Not a big one. That would burn up pretty easily in the atmosphere. But, uh, you know, it's just interesting there that things are being found just literally one day within the same day. So 30,000 miles here. If I had a little bit more time, I'd break out the uh, my other orbital viewer here. But I got to get a few things done here super early and um, get about my day. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty close. Sometimes they uh, they get closer and they still miss us. But one of these times here, we're going to have one that's going to be a, a dandy of an asteroid. I mean, it's it's a possibility. Uh, aside from this one here today, that's 2024 SV2. 21 foot asteroid all these other ones here at least the ones that they're monitoring are way far away in terms of close approach but that's a that's a good one there all right uh let's see what else is there folks i think that's about it seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now stay safe uh, california rocking and rolling a little bit 2.5 and above has that uh, earthquake there in malibu from yesterday 2.9 here today on the San Andreas Fault, a little bit of swarming air, a little bit of swarming occurring on that section of the plate boundary, also just off of it here, on the North American side, right around that bend area. So, stay on guard. It's a weekend out there, folks. Have fun, enjoy the day off there if you got the day off from work, and uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, unless of course something major happens. Have a good one.